Welcome to this official video tutorial of the Tigers on the Hunt game, a turn-based World War II tactical level war game simulation that covers battles on Eastern, Western and Mediterranean fronts. In this video tutorial we are going to focus on the user interface. When you first start up the game you will get the scenario list manager. Here you see the list of all the scenario that is located in your scenario map in your, on your computer. When you left click on a scenario you get a scenario description box. Here you can see the history of the scenario, types of units involved, how many maps that are in play and type of terrain, also how long the scenario is in game turns, the victory objective for the scenario and the scenario designer. So when you want to start a new scenario, you left click on it in the scenario list and you click on the button new game. If you have a scenario saved, you can simply click on the save game button that will open the map on your computer. Or you can also exit the game by clicking on the Exit Game button. When you start a new scenario, you will get the Scenario Configuration screen. First, you have to choose which side you want to play. There is a side A and a side B. Then, you choose if you want to play human versus human, or you play computer versus human player. If you choose computer, there is a setting for the computer AI, which could be advanced or it could be hold. This is set by the scenario designer and is therefore grayed out in this case. If the computer AI setting is on hold, this means that the computer is on a defense and will defend on ground. If the computer AI setting is in advanced, this means that he is on attack and will try to take some ground from you. After that, you can set the difficulty level. There is four types of difficulty level when you play against the AI. EC means that the human player is always in control of all of his units while the computer player follows the command and control rules. If you set it on normal, that means that both the computer and the human player is in control of all of their units all the time. If you set on hard, that means that the, both the human and the computer player follows the command and control rules. But if you set them very hard, that means the computer opponent is always in control of all of his units while the human player follows the command and control rules. Next, you set the fog of war. Fog of war is enabled or disabled for the duration of the whole scenario. When fog of war is enabled, friendly side will only be able to see enemy units if they are in line of sight. When fog of war is disabled, both sides have full view of the whole battlefield. Next, we have the path quality setting. This is a setting for the pathfinding function that the computer uses for calculating the AI unit's movement. This function also uses a high level of CPU power and therefore has three settings. These are high, which is the best possible path, but also the most CPU intensive. Next, we have medium. This is a balance between the, the two, a, a good path and lower CPU power usage. And the path quality low, which is the most rudimentary path quality, also the least CPU intensive one. After that, we have the Russian Regulev AFB rule in effect. By default, all AFVs in a scenario are assumed to have radio. However, not all Russian AFVs during World War II had radios. If this rule is enabled, then each individual Russian AFV must pass a radio check. If it fails, then that AFV cannot start its engine and therefore cannot move for the duration of the whole game turn. Next, which is grayed out in this scenario configuration screen, is the random visibility in campaign games. This is only used for campaign game and is a rule that could randomly determine the visibility for, for a special day in the campaign game. Now let's start off this scenario and take a look at the main game screen. First we have the menu bar with the file menu, status menu, display menu, options menu, tools menu and help menu. If you take a look at file menu we say that you have the options end scenario which would take you back to the scenario manager interface. The save game that allows you to save game progress of the current scenario being played an exit which terminates the game and the player will be back to the desktop. Then we have the status menu. The first item is the scenario attributes. This is a dialog box you know in the scenario attributes, like the name of the scenario, the scenario length, AI difficulty, which size sets up first and move first, and scenario date. 
The next item in the menu is the Scenario Victory dialog, which shows value for, for victory hexes and how many points you can get for killing enemy units. And the last item here is the Scenario Description, which brings out the Scenario Description. After that, we have the Display menu. The Display menu lets you toggle on and off items that you want to be displayed or not. The Jump Map displays an overview of the map and allows you to easier navigate on a larger battlefield. The next item would be the units on. This will turn on off units on the map. And then we have a, a useful tool called the order of the battle. This displays all friend units and their status in the currently played scenario. If fog of war is enabled, only the enemy units visible will be displayed on the order of battle screen. If Fog of War is disabled, all enemy units are displayed. Next we have the Scenario Objectives. It turns on and off graphical indicators on the map to display the actual Scenario Objective. Here we have an American flag on the Scenario Objective. When we turn it off, you can't see it. And when we turn it on again, you see those Scenario Objective hexes. The Small Maps indicator. Next, we can see Exit Texas, we can see the covered arc for, for a selected gun or AFV. We have fire range, line of sight tool, route tool, and markers tool, which can be toggled on and off in this menu. And then there is the options menu. We can toggle on and off the background sound. And then there's the tools menu, with first the line of sight check tool. With this tool, you can check the line of sight between two hexes on the map. After that, we have the Fire Interruption tool. When Fire Interruption is enabled, which it is by default, an AI Continue button will be displayed after every AI unit fires during fire, defensive or advancing fire segments. When not enabled to speed up the AI fire processing, all AI units will perform the fire without the human player having the ability to inspect every AI unit fire resolution in the log window. Note, however, this feature will always be enabled in the AI enemy movement segment so that the human player will have the opportunity to interrupt the AI enemy movement in line of sight with defensive fire. The last menu on the menu bar would be the help menu with about the tigers item which displays information about the game and the reset toolbar option which will reset the toolbar for you. Below the menu bar we have the toolbar. What buttons are displayed for quick and easy access to important menu items. When you, as a player, hold your mouse cursor above a button, you, a tooltip text will, will be displayed so you can see what kind of a tool that button is an easy access to. Below the toolbar we have the tactical map. This is where all the action takes place. You scroll the tactical map, map either with the key, arrow keys on the keyboard, up, up and down, right or left, or by using the mouse cursor up and down, and you will scroll the tactical map. To the right, we have the segment and turn panel, which is divided into three components. First, we have the turn information box, then we have the hex information box, and then we have the action button box. Buttons will be displayed here dependent on which segment we are in or what kind of units we have selected. Let's start with the turn information box. We have the next turn, next segment button. We have the turn number out of the total number of turns. We have also the active side displayed by a flag. And we have the current segment. Below the turn information box, we have the hex information box. As the player moves the mouse over hex on the map, hex information box will display all attributes information about the currently moved over hex on the map. It displays hex coordinates, displays image of the current hex, as well as terrain and control information. Below the hex information box, we have the action bo button box window, which I talked about earlier. We can see an example of action button if I left click on the American 80 gun. We see that now there are display covered art buttons that can turn the covered art to the left or to the right. Other kinds of Action buttons will be talked about in other tutorials. We will now take a look at the unit control panel. When the player left clicks on the hex containing units, 
The unit control panel will be displayed to the bottom left corner. The unit control panel displays all units, weapons and AFEs in the currently selected hex. It also shows the current attributes of each personal unit, support weapon, ordnance, AFE. Ordnance and AFE fires independently, personal units that squad, half squads and crew and the support weapons they carry can combine together to fire and move. To select multiple items on in the control panel tree, first hold down the control key, then left click on individual individual items. If I select a different text with personal units only, and I want to select the both units here, I hold the control key down on the keyboard, I left click on the sergeant, and then I left click on the squad, and I have selected them both. If I want to fire and use the support, support weapon as well, I need to left click on that as well and holding the control key down while doing that, like that. This is the same way as to select the multiple items in the Windows Explorer. To the bottom right we have the action log window, which displays information about different kinds of actions. It can be fire resolutions, close combat resolutions, of board artillery resolutions, or repairing and recovering weapons among other things that can many other things that can be displayed here. Another useful tool is a pop-up window that displays the content of a stack. Instead of just left, left clicking on it and look at the unit control panel for the for the content, you can right click on it and while holding the right button press down you see the content in the stack. If you want to watch it longer you can move the cursor in over the box and will stay opened. And you can see the content and if you don't want to see the box anymore, you move the cursor outside the box and right click and the box will disappear. Lastly, we have the sequence of play. Each scenario has a number of turns played. Each turn represents about two minutes of actual time. Each game turn is divided into two parts and each part is comprised of eight segments. Some segments are done by the, both the attacker as well as the defender. Some segments are performed by the attacker only and some by the defender only. The first segment when you start the scenario will be the pre-game setup segment. At the beginning of each scenario, the player will have the ability to place personnel units, ordnance and AFEs if available on the map, if this is not already done by the scenario designer. The next segment would be the reinforcement segment, if there are reinforcements to enter this turn. Otherwise, the game will skip this and proceed to the next segment, which would be the administrative segment. The administrative segment is split into two parts which are performed automatically. First the attacker's, then the defender's actions. Actions that can take place could can be that broken units try to recover from the broken state, units try to repair broken weapons, AFIS try to recover from a shock state, personnel could try to recover weapons that are not processed on the ground. Next segment is the fire segment where the attacker performs all his fire actions. Then we have the movement segment, where the attacker performs movement actions for his units. The defender can interrupt attacker's movement by performing defensive fire against his units that are moving. Then follows the defensive fire segment, where the defender performs defensive fire against the unit that did not move or moved during the movement segment. Then we have the advancing fire segment, the attacker unit that moved in the movement segment may fire on the segment at reduced firepower. However, support weapons, ordnance and AP may fire only once without rate of fire in this segment. Then there's the route segment. The route segment is split into two parts. First the attacker performs all his actions and the defender performs all of his actions. In this segment, the active players, all broken plus personal units that are adjacent to good order in the units as well as all broken plus personal units in line of sight of enemy units and in open ground, have to route away. Failing to do so would eliminate the broken plus personnel unit. The broken plus personnel units, while they perform their move command in open ground terrain hex, can be interdicted by the enemy units. No broken plus personnel unit may be interdicted more than once if the broken plus personnel units suffer casualty from the interdiction already in the current segment. A broken plus personnel unit that performs low crawl, that's one, a one hex move, cannot be interdicted by the enemy at all. 
A broken plus person unit cannot route towards enemy units in line of sight or towards units, units that were in line of sight at the beginning of the route segment. After the route segment, there's the advanced segment. The attacker may move personal units by one hex and possibly, if he can, move into the defender's hex. This will then trigger close combat assault and the hex will be marked with the close combat marker. The last segment of a turn will be the close combat segment. In this segment, all close combats are resolved. At the end of the close combat segment, if there is still a close combat in a hex, it is marked with a melee marker. And there will be an attack in the next close combat segment in the next turn. That is all for this time. You can watch other tutorials on our YouTube channel. And I thank you for watching.